but and action. Okay, so masterclass, legal and ethical. Um, we're just going to work through the questions. I'll try and explain as far as we go. Um, if there's any issues, um, uh, Karen, if for some reason I don't hear you wave or make <laughs> make gestures or whatever, just to get my attention. Um, but uh, if if you get stuck, I oh, hear. I'm sure to point it out. I'll that to you. And I have a lady behind you who is a busybody who knows exactly, so she's focusing on you too. Sorry, lady behind her, that's the busybody. Um, thanks. Okay. Oh, that's okay, nice. I'm not helping. <laughs> All right, I okay. Right, first question. So, uh, first question it says is, in a workplace practicing as a counsellor, you would need to access and interpret sources of information about the legal and ethical requirements that apply to the work role. So in detail, complete the table for each of the following legal and ethical requirements relating to the occupation. So it says in detail, but there's not, I think in most cases we don't really have to, it, it's gonna be too big to actually write out the whole act. So in detail, just write like short what you think. Okay. So, right. So, number one, in anti-discrimination, and you've got a question. No, 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 I don't. I have the answer. Oh, she's got um, the answer. <laughs> right. She's the can, can I just read the question? Okay, yes, sorry. All right. <laughs> okay, the first one is anti-discrimination. In the workplace, where would you access this legislation? And Okay, is it Queensland Anti-Discrimination Act 1991? Maybe. <laughs> if, if you okay. are... If you are in New South Wales, it will be a different act. Oh, do we if have to do all the states? No, just, let's just do we in Queensland. Okay. Let's do the Queensland one. If you're watching this and you are in another state, use the other state's one. Can I just give you a link? Yeah, sorry? A link. Can I just link it? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. You can do that. Perfect, yeah. If you have the, the link to the act, just put the link in. That's also fine. I mean, it shows of your research that you have done on the, the thing. So, first of all, where would you access it? Yeah, yeah, no, that's not wrong. Okay, and then give an interpretation of the legislation in a counsellor role. So, anti-discrimination, what sort of... If you're a counsellor, what does anti-discrimination mean for you in your role, not in a role of anyone else? And hey, you're treating... Um you can't discriminate against their yeah. color, no, race, 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 you cannot, sex. You cannot discriminate against a client. The only legal way for you not to see a specific client is because of culture base and that is because of language. So um, there's, that's the only reason why you can refer a client um, on that basis unless you really can't help the client. But um, anti-discrimination, you're not allowed to discriminate against any client. But isn't there also some places where have an interpreter that you can... You can have, a, if there's a language issue and you have an interpreter available, go for it. Um, but uh, I personally do not like to work with an interpreter, um, especially because you don't know the language. <laughs> and sometimes the interpreter is talking more stuff than you actually said. So I'm not always so sure that they interpret correctly. Or they have their own little conversation and you like out of this, this loop. So, right, next one. Where would you find sources of information about the legal requirements of a counsellor? Sources of information. Easy. The Code of Ethics. The Code of Ethics. Mm -hmm. TACFA, ACA, whoever you belong to. Yeah. Um, the safest one or the one that will give you the most information will be TACFA. Uh, PACFA. Is that ACA? No. Uh, no. ACA. Oh, PACFA is number one because PACFA oh, is. PACFA. PACFA. P A C F A. PACFA. Because PACFA is the governing umbrella of all of them. So, so PACFA is mothership, and all these other ones are under under PACFA. So, so the most complete code of ethics you'll find will be PACFA. P, yeah, for P for Peter. P A C F A. Um. <laughs> That's it, great. Okay. Okay, so the requirements also to be a member of PACFA is you need to have a master's degree and up. 
So because PACFA focus more on research, while mm. ACA focus more on the work and um, on, on, on the work field. You can join ACA once you've done a diploma. Yes, ACA is for once you've done a diploma. Um, I think CCAA, Christian Counseling Association, Association, the same, but PACFA is a master's and up. Um, so yeah. Right, next one. Right, same question. Um, so on privacy, confidentiality and disclosure, where would you access this legislation? A legislation on privacy. Privacy Act 1980. Privacy Act of 90-something? 1988. 1988 is the Privacy Act. There's also... But there's different standards in the Act. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Um, so, Privacy Act 1988. If you are in a different state, just make sure of where you are. But, um, yeah, so if you want to use a Queensland one, cool, go for it. But Privacy Act of 1988. Um, given interpretation of legislation for a councillor. So how does this work for me and you as councillors? How does Privacy Act work? We've got to keep the client, all the client's information um, secure and everything like that. We can't disclose anything unless they are going to harm themselves. That's the only yeah. Or so, you've got permission. So, we need, yeah, so you need to be very, very careful with your, with your information. You need to keep it safe. I'm not, I'm not allowed to share that. And also you don't share it. Like if you, let's say you're married, okay? You go, you go, you counsel, you come home, and you've, you had this very big case. The first person, the person you want to chat to is your husband or your wife, and you tell them that you're not even allowed to do that. Okay? The only person you can disclo disclose this to is your clinical supervisor when you go for supervision. So otherwise it needs to be locked up. Are you allowed to, like, if you had someone like your spouse, if you want to talk part of it but change names or you can't do that way? No. Oh, okay, I just want to No, no, we don't no. share, you don't share anything. Not even changing names. Not even changing names, whatever, yeah, no, nothing, no, nothing. No, no, no. And then sometimes, we, especially sometimes we have issues with um, dual relationships, yeah. knowing people. Yeah. Your client stays your client even if they die. Okay, your client stays your client if they have passed away. And in that that source also like if you um, if you go to let's say let's say you go to your client's funeral and the guy next to you say to you, Hey, from where do you know him? Then you just you're not going to say I know him because I was his his counselor or that sort of stuff. You still respect your client. Your client stays your client forever. Confidentiality, okay? Even if they say you are a really sucky counselor, I do not want to see you ever again. You still respect the time that you spent with them. Okay. Where would you find sources of information about this for you as a counsellor? On uh, everybody? Code of ethics. Code of ethics. Code of ethics. And obviously also the Act. So you've got the Code of Ethics plus you've got the Act. So both those things play a role for you um, as a counsellor. Hmm. Next one in the same category is Work, health and safety. Where do we find that legislation? Work, health and safety legislation. So that legislation will obviously again be the Work, Health and Safety Act. Um, you can get it. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, the website for Queensland Web is www.worksafe.queensland.gov.au Okay, queenslandworksafe.gov.au yeah. um, Every other place, just Google work, Workplace Health and Safety Act, it will come up. Um, just give us the code or the link to it. Um, you don't have to, please don't explain the whole act. No. All right. Um, so yeah, just think of the poor person that's got to mark this. Um, it's just as exciting to mark it as it is to do it. So um, just give me the link, that's cool. Well, it's um, 2011 to Queensland. Yeah. Given interpretation of this legislation for you as a councillor, how does, how does health and safety work for you as a councillor? Okay, 
Okay, you must make sure not only that your work colleagues are safe, also that your clients are safe, and anybody that walks in off the street is safe. So everyone must needs to be safe, including you. Um, that's why we also say for your own personal safety, do not counsel alone. Um, if you counsel after hours, make sure that there's still someone else in the building. Um, have your chair near the door. Make sure that if you, you when like. you're the counselor, that you've got the closest chair to the access of to the entry of the room, so that you can leave if there's a problem. Um, some 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 rooms also have, or some some places have panic buttons, which you can press in case of an emergency. Just make sure that you're safe. So okay, so that's it. And where would you find sources of information? We're talking about. The Work Health and Safety Act again, plus we look at your Code, code of ethics. ethics. So, Work Health, Place and Safety Act and Code of Ethics, they all also for us as councillors. And do the um, organisations have their own sort of things with yeah. the Work Health and Safety yeah. as well? Yeah, so, so wherever you work, like if you work for yourself, there's a certain oh, certain sure. thing that you need to do. But also if you, you're, you're renting a building, your building also has certain requirements. Um, there need to be signs, evacuation signs up, all sorts of stuff. So it differs from place to place, it differs from where you work. Um, each workplace has a different sort of um, sort of thing for each person. Organisations, is it? Yep. Yeah. Right, choose another piece of legislation related to your work role. What sort of other legislation do you think can add to your work role? Disability Act. Child Safety. Child Duty. Safety. Duty of care. Domestic Duty, violence. Duty of care, domestic violence, all those sorts. So you can actually add anything in there. So ju you just add any other act. Any other act that's got relate that's got I mean there's no there's no it doesn't have to be an act, does it? Um yeah, it's it's talking about legislation. If somebody comes to you and shows you a VRO, you've got to respect that. Yes. Yes. A what, sorry? A VRO. Uh, a, a DVO. We call it DVO. So violence order. Yes, that's part of it. Yes. So domestic violence, those sort of things. Um, so so you can just put in anything there that's got an influence on your your role as a counsellor. Um, what about? I'm oh, sorry. What about the human rights? Human Do rights you, play a role. Yep. You've also got home and community care act. Home and community care. Anything. So you don't have to just put. You can choose like. Domestic violence. You can put anything that plays a role, and you can just go and um, complete those columns. Then, um, where would you access this legislation? You obviously get it on the internet. Um, on the special, you can search for that specific act, um, and then give an interpretation of this. Yeah. And can you put in uh, ethical legal practices as well? Yeah, ethical legal practice, but it needs to be. In, uh, you just need to show where you can get it, where you yeah. can get the act. Um, also, other, other things that play a role for us is stuff like dual relationships, boundaries. Um, there's a lot of things that, that plays an ethical role for us as, as counsellors. Okay. Right. Sorry if I run through this. I've got 21 questions that I'm going through. So, so if we go too fast, just stop and say, hey, can we just go back to that? Or but we're comprehending the question. Yeah. You're saying it and that bank gets comprehended anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's anything, basically any piece of legislation that relates to your work as a counsellor. Question two. Yay. Question two says, list three websites that you could use to access specific legislation or acts that would find out information about specific pieces of legislation Relating to your role as counsellor. A government website. Legal. 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 Yeah. yeah, legal. Yeah. So to find <laughs> the website. I thought they said Google. Google. Google no, is your. Google, Google is Google? your friend. So you Google three websites, that gives you like a access. Website. Yeah. So yeah. So interesting. And please note on this, there is a limit to your word count. Oh, only a minimum. So yeah, okay. minimum of 40 words. Yeah, so we're only listing the sites. So. Minimum. 
So if, so you're going to do more. So it must be more than 40 words. 4,000 is good. It must okay. be more. It must be. It says response yeah. minimum of 40 words. Oh, yeah, Maureen, there's no cut off. Oh, I should go for it. So, so give me a website and maybe <laughs> to give the website, you just explain a bit what it's about. So this, uh, this, this legis or this website helped me with this and this. Um, I've got a great website. Thanks to our friends, um, Michael Lynch Family Lawyers. Um, their website, www.mlfl.com.au. They give you amazing, amazing, amazing work on family law. Ah, so that's what you have to do, okay? So, so you get the website and then explain how so you got it like, right. Yeah, so, so Michael Lynch, um, www.mlfl for Michael Lynch Family Law dot com dot au and these guys focus their, their main focus is family law so um, you can also just um, for your own sake sign up go on their website sign up to their newsletter uh, they send out a, a monthly or so newsletter about changes in the family law and, and things like that it's actually good as a counselor to be aware of things in the family law uh, yeah. because you're going to get clients that come in about that so family law these guys are great they've got a great booklet I think I only have one booklet left um, where they explain a few of the acts so you've got a bit of an open field there with what laws and what website you want to give us is that 40 words in total no. More. 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 Than, that's what I mean. more. More than 40, more than 40 words, words in total. In total. Yes. So I think it will be quite easy to, yes. to actually so over, yeah. go over 40 words. 3,000 sounds good. 3,000 sounds good, yeah, yeah. I don't have, no, I don't have a lot. Sorry? 5,000 even better. <laughs> the only problem is, remember, we have a cutoff date of 20 December, so the more, you, more time you waste, <laughs> yeah. All right, question number three. Question number three is, you are now working as a counsellor. One of the first things you need to do is to identify the scope and nature of your own legal rights and responsibility. Please research and answer the following three questions. Describe four potential legal issues that relate to your role as a counsellor. Privacy. Privacy. One issue is definitely privacy. Another issue as a counsellor. Keeping the, um, your client safe at all times. Safety. Yep. Workplace health and safety. Again, yeah, we, we're going back to what we've just done. Workplace health and safety, legal rights, um, duty of care. Human rights. Human rights, discrimination. It's basically what we just did before. I see a question. Are we required to have some insurance for this? You do have, you do are, you're not really required, but it's advisable. Mm -hmm. Because if someone sues, sues you and, you know, What was that she said? Insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so insurance. Normally when you join up with, a, with, a, um, with one of these governing bodies, ACA, they normally give you reduced rates. So if you go on your own and you want to um, go to an to, uh, insurance company, you can get it. But I know that a while ago I spoke to someone from the ACA and they talked about $120 a yes, year. Yes, it's, um, isn't it public liability It's public liability. Yeah. They talked about $120 for a million dollar coverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if yeah. someone sues you because you gave... It's not Yeah. Says he, uh, Councils must have professional indemnity insurance to maintain adequate coverage. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's that's good if you if you get that through your counselling association, you're safe because that will they know what what you need. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know where it says 100 words? Is that for each or all of it? The whole thing. Oh, I thought it was. The whole thing. Unless you want to do 100 words each, we can quickly change that. No, no, no. Okay, 100 words for the whole thing. So just choose four things, put them in, even if it's one of these previous ones or more than the previous ones we've already discussed, because they all have an influence on you anyway. So. Ah. Ah. Okay. Sorry. No, we, yeah. 
remember, remember we learn by repetition. Um, okay. So uh, if you put in stuff in again. Right. Um, for number two, for two of these issues above, describe how would you respond if these issues arose. So you you just in the previous one, you chose four issues. Okay. So maybe a. Uh, you chose a, a health and safety issue, something so happened, or... To, uh, the workplace health and safety officer. Yeah, yeah, so then how would you... So the issue is, oh, health and safety issue arose, I will refer that to the health and safety officer, uh, fill out whatever forms required, that ever, you know? Mm. Um, so, so just choose one of the four you mentioned before, so you choose two of them, and you just discuss what will you do when that issue arises. So, if it is privacy, you then would speak to your supervisor. supervisor. Yeah, yeah. So, if you work somewhere, you obviously will have a supervisor where you work. So, just get it clear. There are two supervisors involved. Yeah. Okay. If you work somewhere, you have a supervisor. Okay. Yeah. But apart from that supervisor, you have your personal oh, clinical okay. supervisor who is not working for the same place you do. Yeah. It's a person that you... So it would be the manager. Yeah, the manager, whatever. So if it was them or lower, there would be no sure chance of being a family law person. Yeah, you, yeah so you probably go to a family law person or... Um, yeah, it's like Mike, you'll refer them to Michael Lynch people. Out of curiosity, this one that I had, how would you do discrimination? Um, I think you will talk to your supervisor. Uh, you'll talk to your... This one I didn't know, so yeah. I thought... Like, like, like me, I work on my own. So I don't have a supervisor. I have a clinical supervisor. Oh. So so I go. I mean, I see my after every six clients I see, I see my clinical supervisor, which I pay one hundred and twenty dollars, same price I pay. They pay me to see me. Uh, they I so pay you my. Pay them sorry. To see them. Yeah. So you pay them because they're qualified super. They're a qualified counselor who's done more than 2,000 hours of counseling, who's done an additional course to be a supervisor. So I pay her $120 yeah. for my hour, and in that hour I discuss all these things. And yeah. I know a lot about your legal stuff, so if you had a problem, yeah. and I'd be able to if, help you with yeah. it. And if they get stuck, then they go to their clinical supervisor. So it's like because they also have clinical supervisor. So And to have a clinical supervisor is a requirement for your membership of your oh, yeah. governing bodies. Okay. So you, you have to have X amount of visits to your clinical supervisor per year, otherwise they will not allow you to be a member of them anymore. Is that with all ones? All the all the bodies here. Yeah. Some of them have different okay. rules about the amount of times you need to see a supervisor per year. So okay. Next question. Yes. Right. Give a description of what your work role boundaries, responsibilities, limitations are as a counsellor in the workplace. What's your work role, what's your boundaries? Just quickly, we don't need to go deep into this one. Okay, so Name to boundaries. assist a uh, client, boundaries would be you don't accept client, uh, gifts from clients, you don't have a personal relationship with clients. You don't take your clients out to dinner. No. Um, they don't have your phone, home phone number. No they don't personal have your contacts. They don't have your yeah, personal. Always. They don't know where you live unless you, <laughs> unless you're one of those people that's really playing on dangerous areas by having your practice at home. Um, so that sort of stuff. So you can just work out a few things yeah. there. What's your description? What's your role? And what are the boundaries? And make sure we don't cross those boundaries for our own safety. Question four. The new workplace where you work as a counselor has many workplace policies, procedures and protocols that ensure, ad ensure adherence to the legal requirements in the workplace or work practice. Answer the following two questions and give a brief explanation of each. All right, this define the following terms and give two examples. Workplace policy. So you just define what a workplace policy what's a workplace is. policy oh. and give an example. Okay. And it's what the organisation's policy is. Yeah, but yeah. So what's workplace yeah. policy? So you just define what's a policy in the workplace okay. and give an example. Let's say okay. workplace policy would be no uh, relationships with people within oh, so the workplace. That sort okay. of stuff. Yeah. Right. 
Um, workplace procedures. Workplace procedures, what do we do? We, um, when we come in, you actually sign in in the morning so that we have a record of who's in the building. So if there's a fire or something and people need to evacuate, we know who's in the building. That sort of procedures. Yeah. Protocols, what are protocols? What are protocols? Um, are you work? What? Yeah, yeah. What's your pro? Uh, are you work? What you do? Ah. Your, yeah, code of ethics and that sort of stuff. Yeah, all that's organizations. Yeah. Organizational mumble jumble. Okay. Okay. Look it up. Look it up. Google's your friend. Um, but yeah, that's sort of just. Um, yeah, I'm not. I can't give you the answer. So um, cool. Alright, so that's basically what it is. You choose one, you just explain it, and you choose an example. Question is then, choose one workplace policy. So now we've had those other ones. Now it says choose one workplace policy and one workplace procedure from the above. Give a brief description of the policy and procedure. Describe how it is reviewed, including any consultation and mechanism for the input. So it's just basically you choose one you yeah, of no, the yeah. above mentioned, you explain it a bit, you tell a bit like how is it, how, how do you use it in your business, organization, that's it. <coughs> you don't really have to go into really big in-depth on it, just a bit of, bit of an explanation of one of, but remember it must be one of the previous ones you've mentioned. Okay, so... Because that's what the question asks. So that could be dot points apart, Dot points are fine. You don't need to go like writing an essay. Just dot points is cool. Oh, just with the thing I'm with you. Yeah, just dot point. Just dot point. You don't need. You don't need to write an essay. This is a diploma, not a, not a, a thesis. So dot points are fine as long as they make sense. Okay. Um, this is an interesting one. Question five. It says you are. You are new to your employment and your counseling role. It is very important to know and understand how you are going to deal with the following. Recognizing potential or actual breaches of legal requirements. Responding, reporting any potential breaches or actual breaches according to organizational procedures. So there are three items and the following scenarios. I have some scenarios there. So you read through the <coughs> scenario and then all you do is you identify potential breaches. That'd be an organization. Yeah. That, yeah, and then <coughs> so you read those those scenario in the previous question. Yeah. And then you just fill it out here. So you choose yeah. the breaches. Yeah. So say um, if it's a sexual thing or it's if it's a, a boundary breach or if it's you just write it in there. Oh, so great. So it, it's just quite, it's, it's actually quite, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of common sense on that one because you, you can see what, what, what it is and um, yeah, so any questions on that one? Just a quick. I just said that it was also apart from being illegal because it says in a work, you would also look at the work, um, your policies. Yeah, so you look at your policies, you look at your, um, your legal, it talks about legal this one specifically talks about legal. Okay, so the reporting yeah. 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 So sexual stuff, um, uh, domestic violence yeah, stuff. One of the nurses yeah. Very clear what it is. Yeah. Uh, there's one about nurse, huh? Yeah, in the first one, that's yeah. where the guy just broke all confidentiality. Yeah, yeah, confidentiality. Yeah. So that, like, okay, there's the one answer already. Like one first one, they talk about confidentiality breach. So what's happening there? Okay, so be careful, and also confidentiality breach, be careful That's because it, it can have happen quite easily, you can easily break, break, breach your confidentiality. Oh. Oh. Right, before we move on here, there's one question, I see the it's hand. Yeah, it's about the next question. Question six. Yeah, ethical stuff I get confused about. Yeah. So. It says relate to ethical requirements that apply to your role. So, I don't know. Ethical. I what? know legal. You know legal. Legal is law. Ethical yeah, is... 
Ethical is ethical is sort of values, values, morals, that sort of stuff. I think it's on the first page about studies. So ethical is about values and things like that. Um, we also sometimes get, and I don't want a discussion about this one. I'm just going to give you this as a as an example for the time. Ethical is there's some stuff in ethics we call it ethical dilemma. Yes. So sometimes you will you will get along you'll you'll reach a situation where ethical dilemma is. Um, so one of those is I'll just example of a good ethical dilemma is you you as a person believe um, it is unethical to lie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't lie. Your neighbours, <coughs> your let's say the lady that lives next to you come to your home and say to you, please hide me. My husband's going to kill me. So you hide her in your house, the husband knocks on the door and he says to you, is my wife here? That's an ethical dilemma because oh, you're going to lie to him to say she's not here because she's there. But on the meantime, you're also saving her life because if you tell, if you tell the truth, so that's an ethical dilemma. So sometimes you will you'll get in a place of an ethical dilemma. Yeah. So that will come against your belief system sometimes. Um, interesting thing is someone also wrote somewhere i don't know who the guy is he said if in doubt n doubt don't yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you sit in your counseling session and you're in doubt if you're going to break your ethical code rather not do it um unless you're on a really bad ethical dilemma like this so case. is it like who you're counseling yeah clients, so the types of clients that you're counseling yeah some sort of yeah i've it's like you've got let's say an ethical dilemma is you are counseling someone whose a wife abu uh, abuses his wife okay, okay. so yeah. you because your client is your client yeah. you have to give that client your absolute best yeah. in this process but you cannot judge right. yeah. so best friend's husband you can't do because that's a that's a dual yeah, relationship it's an yeah so like that sort of stuff um Dual relationships, especially if you live in a small town where everybody knows everybody, that's another dual relationship. Right, there's three sources of information that relate to the legal requirements that apply to your role. We've done that before, so yeah. you can just jump back to the legal yeah. stuff we did in the beginning because they all add to your role, so we learn by repetition. Question seven. We've done a third of it. Um, the Australian Counseling Association <coughs> is one of the primary professional bodies that regulates counseling practice in Australia. Okay. And they have developed a code of ethics and practice to support the work of counselors. Yeah. There it is. Okay, and you get it from the internet. It's easy to get. You just type in code of ethics ACA and this this document comes up. Um, so in that is the code of ethics and the code of ethics. This is the code of ethics, yeah. Um, if you don't want to just go there, it's also in our, if you log into our study desk, yeah. it's in the downloads. Yeah, but once you leave us, it's no longer available to you, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm saying. But they need it now. Yeah, so it's, it's there, okay. Um, your, okay, briefly explain the relationship between the code of ethics and the code of practice and detail four examples, and it's all in here. The code of ethics, yeah. code of practice, they're it's all in all there. Okay. Okay, code of ethics is, it's a bit of a common sense question actually, code of practice, what do I do, safe practice sort of stuff, uh, code of ethics, moral obligations towards your yeah. client, um, giving your client the best ability, um, code, code of ethics or practice is also if I cannot counsel my client, my counsel, my client's issues is bigger than, than what I'm trying to do, I refer them on, I don't keep on counseling them. Um, because of the fact that they're my client, I refer them on. Also, interesting, uh, it's just off topic, try not to always give your clients away. Okay? If you refer a client on, refer them on for a specific <laughs> thing. So I'm referring you for, for the grief counseling to my friend Martin, who's great at grief counseling, but I want you to come back after two weeks so we continue working on your relationship issue. Right? Um, these people are your income. So don't give your income away. Right? Send them, refer them to specific things and let them come back to you. Right? Okay. Are we doing the referrals in our role place? Yeah, your referrals, your role place. So, so normally we, 
when you refer, refer them for something specific, but also make an appointment to see them again. Okay, because you are the main counsellor. Any questions up to now? Just with that one when you said it's on in that, but the last bit says your response should be around 100 words and refer your learner guide. Yeah, well, we well, it's in reading we know the learner guide, the value of the learner guide. I'll just ask uh, because yeah. you're talking with the marking. Yeah, yeah so go. But I, it also says in the question, it's in reading A2. Yeah, so it's everywhere. Oh, sorry, not that one. I was in on the, the ACA. Question, yeah. So it's also, so, so it doesn't so matter we don't have to do it. doesn't matter if you don't do that. I will read yeah. this and I will know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Or not. I just want you to okay. hear that. Okay. No, that is doing it with us, he's going to make sure we get it right. I make sure that it makes sense. It makes sense. It must make sense. I'm not going to send you out there. In this is this is honestly the most important unit we have. Okay. Although it's the boring unit, this is the most important unit. Because this one is the one that's going to make you... If you break this, no matter how good counsellor you are, if you, if you don't have ethics and you can't do the legal stuff, then you're going to be like kicked out of these organizations. So this is really, really important. Um, so next one, read. Through the ACA code of ethics and practice presented in reading A, so it's apparently in reading A too, but I'll give it to you personally. In this space below, write down two ethical principles listed in the ethic, code of ethics. In your own words, explain how this ethical principle impacts on the work of a counselor. So you just choose two of them and you explain them right and don't need to explain a lot you don't need to write me a thesis yeah, it says impacts the work of counselor in a practical way yeah so how does how does confidentially yeah. con 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 confidentiality yeah. impact you um, oh, one, okay. one example yeah. is um, I'm seeing a, a 17 year old 16 year old kid um, I promise to him that whatever he says in my room is confidential. I will not. And mommy comes in and says, "I pay the bill. I want to know." Mm -hmm. Then you say, "Mommy, sorry, <laughs> yeah, um, can't you can't do that." Yeah. yeah. What I normally do with my clients, uh, especially my younger clients, I'll say to them, "Whatever you say here is confidential. I will not tell your parents anything unless you give me permission mm -hmm. to do that." But I also go further and I say to the parents, "I say if." If you phone me and tell me, Johnny did this and this and this this week, I want you to discuss it with him, then I will say to them, okay, fine, thank you very much, but I will tell Johnny you phone me. So I tell my client, my, my, my parents, that I will tell the kid that you phoned me and you did this and that. Because he's your client. He's my client. So he's yeah, no, my client. And that helps me with my confidentiality with my client. But that also would help build rapport with the client. That's it. Uh, when you said yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, what about if you get a 13 year old client or something like that? Isn't that covered under, like, their parents are their minors still? They're still a minor, but you still keep your confidentiality. You keep your confidentiality unless you feel there's something that you need to discuss. Like harm, being bullied. Yeah. Um, those sort of stuff you okay. need to because there's stuff that we can like you'll say to them you to told me that someone was bullying you can I tell your mom about this mm. Mm. okay if they say no then okay you need to respect that mm. but if there's certain things mm. like saying stuff like they self harm themselves or that ever mm. then you say I have to tell okay mm. there's certain areas where you ask permission but there are certain things that you say you have to that's your duty of care just that, so it's plainer because usually the beginning, the first yeah, yeah, one, you'd, you'd cover it with the yes. parents and the child, that is yes. confidential. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yes. <coughs> what is your counselling with child, say, under 10? Yeah. Does, does it still apply, like, say, six, eight, six, seven, eight? Do you still need to get their permission? That's um, mm. You sort of have to, but in, some, in most cases on that age, you prefer that the parent is, is, is more involved in the process. So, um, in that younger age, especially when you do child counseling. Yeah, yeah, they don't, but, yeah. but your counseling techniques will be also be totally different at that age. So, you'll do more like art therapy, play therapy, that sort of therapies with that child anyway. So, 
but yes you need to it just depends on your policy and it depends on what we're talking about too like if we are talking talk, let's say um example was my kid had ocd so he went to griffith university 15 sessions ocd busters i had no idea what my, what was said in the session but at the end of every session i had to go in for 15 minutes with my son and we talked about what they did Mm, that's what I do with mine. So, so, so if yeah. you have a, a small child, maybe you can do that. Uh, it depends on, on your situation. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. What would happen if um, a child reported one of their parents as a sexual predator? Would they get reported? Yeah, that will. You'll have to report that. You would. Want you would have you'll to report have to report that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to to docs, yeah. Rather be safe than sorry. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. Rather lose the lose them as a yes. client if it's wrong mm. than um, you've got everything noted anyway, yes. so it's not yes. something that you made up. Yeah. So with the manager at what age group would that go up to? Well, about thirteen and sixteen. Um normally can that still be? You can. Unfortunately at sixteen they they're on their own. Okay. Mm. So so fifteen and under. Yeah, fifteen and under. Although we found yeah. when a child's yeah. about fifteen we do the docs things but things move very very slow because by the time these yeah. things get actually to be processed and whatever the child's in 16. so so it's a very very difficult process when they're about 15 because it's just not going to go like yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But is it still by law you have to well you have to you have to be rather be safe rather go and do this and do the paperwork and even if they say nothing about it then you i mean you're legal and ethical keep your side clean okay Rather overdo a st do stuff. Right. Question nine. What are what are practice standards and what are the potential consequences that can occur if a counselor fails to meet the minimum minimum practice standards? They'll get fired. They get fired. Also, um, if they've done the wrong thing, the organisation can have their funding taken away. Yeah. If they get funding, yeah. They can um, end up in court. They can get up in court, they can be sued, they can all those stuff. The only issue at the moment is that counselling is not a legis... There's no law for counselling. But there will be. There will be. And PACFA is working hard at this. Well, when PACFA gets this through, we're going to do them... We're going to get the Medicare rebates and stuff yes. like that. So that's what PACFA is fighting for. Mm -hmm. At this moment, any person can go and counsel, even if you believe... Um, do tree therapy or whatever therapy and get people to sit under trees and sing Goomba Ya uh, and call it counseling. Unfortunately, they can do that because and there's no legal um, thing for counseling at this stage, but it will come in and that, those sort of stuff will, will because stop. Because we come under community service, don't we? Sort of, yeah, but it's not really covered by yeah, but any... The, le the legal stuff, yeah, yeah, we yeah, had to look at yeah. anything up, it's community service. But it's going to be, it's so going to get there. when they bring all this in, like the... Uh, Homes we're doing are not really going to be any good, are they? Well, it's ACA approved. It's ACA approved. But so. it's still to be yeah. a meat council. You still need to go to Well, it's better to go further. I mean, it is better to go further. But it's already made up during the winter. Question 10. What is code of conduct and when should council refer to this document? What is code of conduct? It's how you. It's how you work. How you conduct yourself. Yeah, how you are with the clients. Yeah. You, yeah. Code really of right. conduct. Code of conduct. I mean, it's like dress properly when you see your clients. That sort and of isn't stuff. Isn't that in the policies and procedures of the organisation yeah. that you work for? Yeah. yeah. Normally, when you when you actually go to work somewhere, there's like a one that says how much you be dressed and yes. and, and and uniforms and and everything. There's there's a, there's a whole code of conduct thing. You're not allowed to swear. You're not allowed to do this. Of that, and usually when you start anywhere, they'll give you a their procedures. Yeah, kind of they give you that, and you there. sign it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they design forms. yeah, you sign heaps and heaps of forms right. when like you work. Yeah, uh, what is that? Social media. Yeah, social media, um, privacy, like photography, that sort of stuff. If you work on your own, you actually do your own code of conduct, which you yeah. normally get from your ethical yeah. procedures and stuff anyway. So. I mean, there's stuff for me, it's like, I will not see someone alone, there must be someone outside, there must be a secretary outside, that sort of stuff. 
um, I will not go to someone's house, I will not let someone come to my house, that sort of thing, that's not happening. I'm not meeting a client that will not see me in the counseling room um, at their at a coffee shop or something like that, that's part of my code of conduct. So if you work on your own, create your own code of conduct. Yeah, which are guidelines. Your guidelines, okay. Question 18, uh, 11 says, when working as a counselor, you must demonstrate that you have your own ethical responsibilities. Describe the scope and nature of your ethical responsibilities in a workplace as a counsellor. What ethical rules exist for counsellors and what is their reach or limitation? Okay, so, when you are a counsellor, write your own ethical rules. Okay, so, basically what this is, is you write your own ethical rules. So, you tell me in there, in less than 4,000 words, <laughs> you, right. you tell me what... Sorry? I thought I was looking to see where it had 4,000 words and I was going to... I was just trying to see the fear in everyone's faces. <laughs> but um, just write there your own ethical stuff. So let's say you've got your own practice. What are the ethical stuff that that's logo areas for you? Okay. So the fear in your face, we will give you 4,000 novel answers and 4,000 word answers. So, so it's not making up our own... Make your own ethical okay. thing. What You're counselling. I mean, I know, I know of a guy who said that one of his clients came in and said to him that I prefer to be counselled while I'm naked. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marie, that's for you, mate. And then you say to him, oh, that's fine. Or do you say, no way, that's not what we do here. So, so sometimes we have strange... I mean, I know of someone that saw someone and this person's got a dual personality. So they saw them in this and then they went out of the room get dressed in, in women's clothes and came back in the room. Wow, um, so it's fascinating. So it will be fascinating, but it's like, I'm sorry, dude, you're not leaving my room when you're here. We are now sitting here and I'm not going to see you dressed like a woman. Um, you know, so you choose your ethical codes, okay? Well, you could if you wanted to. You could if you wanted to, yeah. Yeah, because he had not You sort of judge him. No, he's just showing you that to yeah. him, he wouldn't, yeah. where he was. But if you wanted to, you could. Yeah, yeah. Like like an example. If, if the guy comes to you and says, I don't, I cannot come to counselling if I don't wear, wear or, or have a gun with me. It's like, it's like, it's like okay, that's not going to work for me. That's not part of my, my safety. So, so what would work for you and just write it there. That's quite easy. Okay. There you go. good example, sir. Unless yeah. As a new counsellor working in a domestic violence section of a large community services organisation, describe what your ethical responsibilities according to the workplace policies, protocols and scope would be. So you're working in a domestic violence place. What is your ethical thing in that one? Uh, ethical. Yeah. Ethical responsibilities. So you don't give out phone, phone, phone numbers, but also you do not become personally involved. Ah. No. Okay. See, this is what I mean. You don't become personally involved. So it's not like, I feel so sorry for you. You've got two kids. It's like, fine, come with me to my house. You can stay at my home tonight. <laughs> no, you can't do that. You mean good. Or I'll give you a lift to the train station. We don't do that. We don't give our clients lifts. We don't do anything, although you feel you want to, although you feel you want to help them, you cannot do that. Not taking the client to a refuge. But then when you take him to a refuge, you do not go alone. So when you, when you have, like, when the, that question came up, when you have to take a client to a refuge, you go not alone. So another staff member will have to travel with you. You don't take your client or the kids alone in your vehicle, you make sure you take another staff member who's over 18 with you. Or organise maybe a taxi service. Or organise, or, yes. or get them an Uber. Yeah. 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 Oh, some of those places will come and get them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they yeah. cover you in case they turn around and yeah. accuse you of doing something. Okay. Okay. No, yes. that in domestic violence, as this is, you could have the husband watching the phone. Yeah, yeah. That's yes. right. So, yeah. And they, it's oh. your own safety. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Remember, remember yeah. safe, your safety yeah. first. Okay, your safety and your ethical stops first, okay? Okay. 
In your new role as a counselor, <coughs> there will be potential ethical issues and dilemmas that will occur. Describe at least three possible ethical issues or dilemmas that might occur and give a brief description of how you would handle them. So with these ones, you choose three ethical dilemmas. It can be anything that you see as an ethical dilemma. And you're right there. How would you handle that? So we go back and use the ones that were... You can use, and see where, back there where you, can use ones. you can use the previous ones. You can use the ones we've answered already. Mm. Um, yeah. If, that's, if that's some of yours, you can add new ones. So what will be... And, and look, try and do a bit of introspection for yourself. What will be an ethical dilemma for you? What was that word you used? Introspection. Introspection. Word. That's a big word. That's a clever word, isn't it? it? Is a it's word. A, yeah, so you just um, your word of the week. You do a bit of self re self reflection and say, okay, what's an ethical dilemma for me? Um, how would I handle if I get a client who's, let's say, a pedophile? Oh, a client that's a pedophile. So I've got my client who comes in, he's a pedophile. How would I deal with that? Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's like, yeah. So that's personal stuff. That's personal stuff. So there's lots of stuff. So there's, um, that's why I say. You didn't have enough knowledge. You'd be silly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, normally you refer by saying, I don't have enough knowledge. That's yeah. keeping safe. Just so. Yep. Yeah. Jumping on to the next question. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking about the ones that were more personal and then you were Give a description on how, in dealing with all three issues, you would ensure that all issues would be dealt with in a non-judgmental manner. Okay. Is that like talking to your supervisor? Talking to your supervisor, um, self-reflection. Remember, one of one of our greatest tools as a counsellor is the self-reflection tool, where you actually reflect on your own things. After each client, take some time, reflect. Yeah. Um, Keep a bit of a journal. Remember when you keep a journal, please don't yeah. use any names and stuff because you don't want anyone to read your journal about your clients. But self-reflection is very important. So do self-reflection. Um, find yourself also the transference, counter-transference thing. While I was talking to him, I found there was some transference happening. What is this transference? Did I counter-transfer? What's going on here? That sort of... So with transference and counter-transference, transference is when they're, they're projecting showing, on they're you. projecting on you, and counter is when you're projecting back on Yeah, them. yeah, so she likes you because she thinks you are like the father figure that she never had, and so she's like, and you like, oh, I want to be adored by someone because my yeah. wife is not really giving okay. me the honor right. I am, so I tra yeah. transfer so back to her. Awareness of self as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a good one. Awareness, awareness of self. Self-awareness. Self-awareness, use Things of self. Things you don't realize you might be biased. Yeah. Really yeah. Have it until it comes. Yeah. yeah. Or bright strangers. Even use, use of self. What's happening in your body? Mm -hmm. I'm counting this person. Why am I getting really tight shoulders? Mm. Or why am I feeling stressed? Why do you... Why whenever I'm working oh, so with this client, to your body. yeah, why I'm working with this client, why when I work with this specific client, I'm always exhausted after the session, that sort of thing, that, that's our use of self questions that you need to ask yourself, mm -hmm. because sometimes our clients project on us and we pick it up, yeah. I normally get from clients, I normally get um, tight shoulders, when my client tenses up, I get tight shoulders, and I'll normally call them on that and say, I've got tight shoulders now, why? Are you stressed? Mm -hmm. So you're picking up on their stress? I pick up on their stress. Okay. So, yeah. So refer, look, and listen to yourself. Yeah. So it's like watching their body, but you're picking it up. Yes, yeah, pick it up. Pick listen it up to your own body. Yeah, listen sorry. to your own body in the process, okay? Uh, question 15. As a counselor, you often must deal with competitive values between a client's wishes and public safety and you must decide to deal with these competing values using effective problem solving technique. Describe three problem solving techniques that you could use successfully when there's competing values. <coughs> competing values. You could bring in a third person. What, what sort of competing value oh, yeah. do you think you'll have? Ethics. Um, uh, ethical value. What what would be what would be an issue for you? 
I don't have a competing value about this. Okay, I'm, I'm not adding this. Not but but just to give you an example, um, I have an issue when I counsel someone whose parent has or have died of Alzheimer's. That's not a value issue. That's not a personal issue. Okay, so I'm just giving you an example of what they're trying to say. So when when I've got someone that that's that is like it's very close to home to me, so I struggle with that. And I always have to do self-reflection and always take that to my supervisor. So as somebody who has gone through a horrific domestic violence, you may have problems being able to work yes. with that person. So, well, yeah. The woman going back to the man. Yeah, yeah the, the woman goes back to the man. She's been, she's been yeah. the domestic violence there, but she goes back. So that's... that's or your that's, pain getting really brought up about your own past yeah. life. Is really yeah. Or you work with someone about something else a lot, and then six, seven sessions later, they come and they say, I've decided to go back to the first issue. And then they're like, you're like, you know, we worked seven sessions on this, and now you want to jump back to the original? It's yeah. like, but without showing that, you keep your smile and you just continue. Yeah. <laughs> so how would you deal with that? The question actually is between the client, well, is the that client's just an wishes and public safety. Yeah, client's wishes and public, public safety. safety. So, so Mr. Pingvary, is that just is that just an example? Yeah, it's just an example. It could be any client issue. It could be any client happen. issue. So client issues and public safety. Someone yeah. says they're going to kill themselves. Come make their kids and go and yeah, yeah. drive them into the river or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Yeah, yeah. Or, or I'm going to take the kids. Um, I'm going to pick up my kids. Uh, my wife doesn't want me to see my kids. I'm going to pick up yeah, my kids at school and we're going to go to yeah. England. Yeah. So what yeah. if your client is an abuser and says he's going to go home and beat his wife and his children? So what happens then? Then, the place. then, you, then, then you have to actually ring someone. Yeah. yeah. Ring okay, someone. So this also comes in like when anyone's going to self harm okay. or That's well. like yeah. so if I know you can hurt someone else okay. for yourself, mm -hmm. that's what it does. Okay. 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 Yeah. In counseling practice, there are many situations that could lead to unethical conduct. List three examples. Easy. Okay. That again, in counseling practice, there are many the situations, situations that can lead to unethical conduct. List three yeah. possible unethical conducts. Yeah, well, that's that's the the client. Client. Having sex One with of your clients and yeah, you have for lunch. Good. Yeah, clients, you become personally involved with your client. Even the gift. Yeah, it's taking like gifts, taking expensive gifts from your clients. Okay. Um, Not reporting um, child abuse. Not reporting child abuse. Um, you feel sorry for your clients. So you become personally involved in your client. Um, what if you really, really like the client, it's a cool client, and you are f sort of, you falling in love with the client, you're both not building a relationship, and suddenly your client comes to the end of the session because they can't afford it, and you suddenly say, okay, don't worry, come anyway, well, come anyway every week for free. Or you change your hours for a specific client. You can say, okay, my normal hours is an hour, but because you're such a great client, we make it two hours for the same price. And this has happened, I guess. That's right? happened, yeah. That's wow. a, that, there's lots of ethical issues. So you can just think on that one. Stuff that's ethical, uh, unethical, how you can handle that. Right. Question goes further. It says, with each unethical conduct outlined above and this description of who you should report this to, why have you chosen this person agency to report the conduct to? Yeah, so but if you're not... Okay. Yeah? If you, if you become personally involved with someone, yeah. and you don't report it, and you don't report yeah. it, yeah. would you talk to your clinical supervisor? Yes. 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 I talk to my clinical supervisor whenever I pick up transference. Whenever you pick up transference or anything, like I had an issue, a personal issue, where I struggle when my clients cry. I had an issue of crying. I do not like it if my clients cry. And then I sat with my clinical supervisor and we actually worked out why and we actually dealt with that issue and now my clients can cry as much as they like. <laughs> 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 you bit hard. That's bit so what do you do with a client and issue had that issue with it? How do you deal with that? I sort, of, I, sort of I sort of withdrew a bit. I, I withdrew. Like so it's like a, I couldn't so Yes. If you're having relations with yeah. the client 
Yeah. You're not going to tell anyone. You're not going to tell anyone, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what do you do then? Um, Somebody jumps on you and then you... So if, then you but, yeah. it? but if you know about that, um, let's say you know that your um, colleague is doing that. Okay. Who do you dob on? Okay, so, okay. So that's how then you'd answer the yeah. question if it was someone else having... Who do you report the unethical things to? So you would report them to the supervisor. <coughs> And if it's really bad, the police maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, um, I read, I read the other day, um, I read over the weekend, I read about a case um, where a person, <coughs> I'm not going to say who, uh, like it didn't happen in Australia, it happened in another country. Um, the person actually went on online on Facebook as a girl, um, chatting to boys, getting them to send in yeah, yeah, yeah. photos and stuff like that. Um, and started bullying them when they didn't want to do that anymore, said you have to keep on sending me these photos. They kept on doing that. Oh, and then he said, go speak to your, to your school counsellor, you go to the school counsellor, but this person is the school counsellor. <gasps> ah. Oh. <laughs> so, and then when they go and see the school counsellor, the school oh. counsellor says, do what the bully says. So they kept... Oh, you're oh. joking! So, yeah, oh, yes. that so is bad. That's oh, bad. That that's that bad. That's really bad. Yeah, because that's bad. So, so, um, that's twisted. Yeah, that's slightly twisted. So, um, yeah. And it does happen. Um, and that sort of stuff you report to the police. Yeah, yeah I suppose if somebody in counseling says that they've been stealing things, do you, do you have to do report that or not? Not really, unless mm -hmm. it's like really something big like robbing a bank. Yeah. Oh, okay. I declined. Are you stealing from your organisation though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. your organisation, obviously. Yeah, yeah. 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 organisation. I had, a client, I had a client to stole from me once, so... Oh, what did you do? I said, please put it back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had a client who sat in front of me and said that her life has deteriorated and she's stealing now, and she says, like, that pen, and my pen was lying on my desk, and she took the pen and put it in her pocket. So what's our kleptomania? Yeah, that's, that's true. Then you refer to it. Yeah, well, my, there are people in our... Yeah. I'm, so I'm talking about ethics. Okay. Not oh, we're up to question 17. <laughs> Yo. That's exciting. Yeah. 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 No, it's a law. It's a, it's breaking, breaking a, uh, a law. A law. Yeah. 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 Question 17. All right. Everyone, question 17. As a counsellor, there are many situations where a conflict of interest arises when dealing with a situation or the client. For the following three conflicts of interest, describe what appropriate line of action is. <coughs> you have a dual relationship <coughs> with a client, such as a client you are counselling is also a member of your child's school community. <coughs> That's a dual relationship. You couldn't so, counsel them. Hey? Eh? You couldn't counsel them. Yes. It is conflict of interest. Yes. Yeah, so we're talking about conflict of interest. You have a dual relationship with your client, okay? You have to refer them. You have to refer them unless they are fine with it. Uh, and you set boundaries. <coughs> I counsel at a church. Every client I have, I have a dual relationship with. Because they attend the church. They attend the church, we go to functions together, we go to home sales together, we go to all sorts of stuff. Yeah. I have a specific form we fill out to say, okay, I'm seeing you, but this. You don't talk about what we say in the counseling to me outside the counseling room. You don't this, you don't this, yeah. you don't. The only time you talk about this issue is when you see me in this room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So it's like we set boundaries. Okay? So. Uh, sorry? That would be a really hard thing to do. It is really hard. It's really hard, but your clients, you need to be firm. So sometimes a client will come to you and say, I want to talk to you about this, and they say, okay, let's make an appointment. All right? And also, what I do is with each of these agreements we sign, I actually fax or email that agreement to my clinical supervisor. So my clinical supervisor know that I have a dual relationship with this person. Oh, so you've covered your butt. Yeah. Yeah. So they know already. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's one. And funny enough, that is our practical. <laughs> uh, you have a dual relationship with a... It's a that's the practical for this unit. Um, you discover that a person who has been referred to you for counseling is a member of a religious group that you have had very negative experience <laughs> with as a young child 
So, this person comes to you, they're part of a religious group, you've got, you've got an issue with them. So, what because do you do? That's not the client's fault. It's not the client's no, fault, it's your no, fault. No, it's not your no. fault, it's the religious group that you no. have. The so, how do you deal with this? There's still transference problems there, isn't there? There it's might be transference problems, there might be issues, but I would take on this client. Yeah. And I will discuss it with my clinical. <coughs> no, no, no. But I will also discuss it with my clinical supervisor. Yeah, just to make sure it doesn't interfere with your ability to Yeah, it doesn't interfere. Once that comes in, we can actually have boundaries. What if the client is comfortable with you? What? Yeah. You can, or you can, you can, you can, and you reflect on it, you do self-reflection, yeah. that sort of stuff, yeah, yeah, but so, sometimes something like that could also help you get over it, it can help you to get over it, yeah, and remember, we are not there to judge, so no, we need to work on yourself, that's it, and then as these things come up, that's why we have a clinical supervisor, so we chat to them, could you discuss that with a colleague though, yeah, you can, <coughs> sometimes we work in a place, yes. we'll have, um, on the outside. <coughs> Sometimes you'll have like the group will come together, mm. which you, all the counselors in your group we work mm. together, and you'll bring a case. Mm -hmm. We say I have a client. We talk about a case. Uh, apart from your normal, we, we call those peer review sessions yeah. where you, each one brings a case and we discuss a case. But again, we don't call, no, we don't name names. No. You say I have a client that yeah. is this. He's a 32 year old man, and this because is that the issue. We had to go. Yeah. We had one like that, remember? Yeah, we had a practice like that. We had to go to see our supervisor. So, hang on, you haven't done the third one. No, you haven't either. Too late. Okay, oh. what, what is the third one? Sorry. Um, on discussions with a new client who is very stressed, <coughs> in the first counselling session, you discover that the subjects of her angst is, in fact, another private client of yours. It's mm. a misspelling. Okay, it's no, mis another, another client of yours. Okay. So we so have. You make sure that the clients don't meet each other, like you make their. I will. I will. Yeah, I will refer. Thing. I will refer the client on to another counsellor. Oh really? Yeah. Um, that's my Why? personal view. I will not see someone, especially if they are have got issues with each other. I will not because he's going to talk about. She's going to talk about him. Uh, he's going. Yeah. So I would rather say, um, because of it's going to be a, a breach of, of a conflict of interest for me, mm -hmm. because. Uh. And also, I have a lot of inf inside information about he, what he told yes. me about you that you don't have. Um, so, so mm -hmm. I would I would refer on. Okay. That's one case that I would refer on. Even to another colleague. Yeah, even to another colleague. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would I would so rather separate. send that person to someone else. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, yeah, yeah, just right. um, it's just an ethical thing because you know, unless unless the problem is. <coughs> You cannot ask her, let's say it's a woman, a man and a woman. Yeah. You cannot ask her and say, can I tell him that you're my client? Uh. Because if you say, can I tell you, him, that you're my client, I've revealed that he's my client. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I broke, yeah. I broke yeah. confidentiality yeah. and yes. I cannot go to him and say, can I, so you need to keep that confidentiality okay. at so all times. So breach of trust because it's, it's, yeah. the You break your confidentiality. That's the same as if somebody, the husband come in and said, I want to talk um, about, uh, find yeah. out something about my wife or yeah. I want to talk to an you can't do that yet, you can't do that. Okay. Mm. Sorry, very quickly, what, um, how would you actually, if you can't tell the person, you know, to yes. about yeah. client, you can't tell her that he's your client, how do you explain to her that you're referring to her? Um, just because you say maybe, you, you need to say something like, um, I, for, for, I can't, I can't, it's, a, it's a conflict. It's a conflict of interest for me. Yeah. It's an issue I can't I can't discuss with you, but I would I can't counsel so you. you. Don't think you, you so don't yeah. Tell me anything, yeah. But you just yeah. You just be just be careful. Just be careful how you and word it. Yeah. Okay. Could because you tell them that you say, "Your principal, um, <laughs> I don't think I've got enough knowledge to be able to yeah, go yeah. through this." With yeah, you yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or I'm not the correct counselor for this issue. I will rather take it on you than throw it on them and be careful. It's so easy to break conf confidentiality mm -hmm. in yeah. cases like this. Just be yeah. careful. Okay. Right, question 18. 
research and document definitions of the following. So just Google is your best friend. Yeah. Yeah. Dignity of risk, duty of care, human rights, including universal declaration of human rights, relationship between human needs and human rights and frameworks. So that's basically just research definitions, okay? So easiest is type it in and the first definition that comes up, unless it's Wikipedia. Yeah, if it says Wikipedia, please don't go to that one. That's the only not acceptable reference. Reading, reading A has definitions. Yeah, okay. Reading A has definitions of your book. Um, or if you're lazy to type it, Wikipedia, um, Google, copy and paste. Um, but um, reading A has definitions. Okay, this is another research. Okay, and um, research and explain the legal and ethical considerations of the following in a couple of sentences. <coughs> so just um, legal and ethical considerations for children in the workplace. Is that only in Queensland? No, it's wherever you are. So if you if you are in Queensland, yes, give me Queensland. If you if you are in New South Wales, give me New South Wales. If you are in Western Australia, give me Western Australia. Um, it's my issue to find out which law is law. Um, I'll research that when I mark your work. But wherever you are, okay. All right. So you just easy. You just go through those, and um, in a couple of sentences, well, just make it sure for some people. Just a couple of sentences, right? Not a book and not a thesis, all right? Just a couple of sentences. Right. Okay. Question 19. Outline one key similarity that the legal and ethical frameworks of counseling practice have. Hint, think about your common aim. Your response should be no more than 30 words. <coughs> Outline one key similarity that the legal and ethical frameworks of counseling have. Ah, oh, so you just read it and what, oh, oh, what similarity they both have. Yeah, so what similarity is there with the legal and ethical framework? So what's the same? Mm. And it's not a big thing, only blessed about 30 words. No more than 30 words. No more. 15. Okay. 15 is perfect. Um, let, please take note, I do count the words. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, and I do mark it unsuccessful, as many of you have found out. Right. Um, looks like we're stuck on question number nine. No, B. Number B. Briefly outline two key differences between the legal and ethical frameworks of counselling practice. Briefly outline two key differences between legal and ethical frameworks of counselling practice. So you look at them, what are the key differences? What's legally bound? What's legal, I mean... And what are two differences? Yeah, two differences. I mean, legal is legal. Legal is law. Ethical is more your personal, your good practice, that sort of stuff. No more than 50 words, please. Question 20. We are almost there. Good. List three situations in which the management of a counseling organization should ensure that their policies and procedures are reviewed. Your response should be under 100 words. Three situations. When um, there could be a new policy that comes in to run yeah. the acts, then you need to... You need to, yeah. He also, one of the ways to make sure that you are up to date is to go to the PATFA conference, go to your ACA conference and stuff yeah. like that. Read the newsletters, sign up for the newsletters so that you know all the changes that are in policies. Okay. And you can already, even if you're not a member of them, can already sign up for the newsletters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so three situations. Okay, one is... If, um if a privacy if a privacy thing has been like breached. Yeah, but we are talking about the policies are reviewed. Reviewed. So so if there's if there's changes in the policies, review. It's a, a so different way of being in one of the in one of the units um, we had there was a situation where a woman, someone cut clap client came in and they were extremely upset about the fact that the policy in the organization was that you had to get all this information at the beginning. She really yeah. needed to just 
Yeah. Gobblesoft, so you have to take that. Yeah, so it's about the policies. Okay. So, yeah. so you're changes in the policies. So if there's changes in the policy, okay. how do you how do you change them? How do you get the, we get the people together, we have meetings, we have workshops, we have memos, we have So how do you review this? Yeah. Call yeah. And also make sure that your policies are working. So maybe questionnaires to your people saying, um, how do you feel about our policies? How is this working for you? So it's about reviewing it. And when you can review it also in yeah. team meetings. Team meetings, yeah, that sort of thing. Okay? Um, it's about review. So three situations in which the management of accounting organizations should ensure that their policies and procedures are reviewed. So you cannot stay with the same policy and procedure you had in 1910. No, no. Okay. Okay. Three situations. Yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, review it. So, so, so I mean, there's changes with, let's say, uh, something came in. Let's say we have. Um, Facebook comes in, so oh, Facebook's okay. not in your yeah, policy. Yeah. I'm not yeah. allowed to post anything on Facebook. Okay. But if I post it on Facebook and it's not in my policy, you can't can't say I did something wrong. Uh, so you okay. need to review right. the policy and say you are not okay. allowed to put anything on social media. Usually, they're always usually organisation should review everything. Yeah. 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 So yeah. what's yeah. the policy? Yeah. yeah. So if something within the Aboriginal culture would change, then we need to be all on board. There's a change in the law and yeah, change in the, yeah. the policy and whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you are, you are up to date with what happens yeah. in your organisation. Last question. It is every worker's responsibility to contribute to workplace improvements. Explain in your own words how you could contribute to the development and review of workplace policies and procedures. So, in your own words, how can you contribute? So, you see something that's been double handled or done twice, and you can think of yeah. it. Yeah, you see something that's not working, or you are you have subscribed to various newsletters. You read these newsletters and you see what's happening in other companies or other other counseling organisations. Um, like let's say I've got a list there: Gottman Institute, the Counseling Institute, the whatever. And you see how they do things, and you, you can actually come to your organisation in your meeting and say, you know, it's working for them there. What do you think we can change this policy to that way? So it's just basically meetings. Bring them up in team meetings. Team meetings. Stuff. So just explain in about a hundred words. How would you? Um, contribute to workplace changes in the policies. And make sure that all workers update their skills on different yeah. presentation. Yeah, so that's just, it's quite easy. Um, it, there's nothing major to this question. Um, and that's it. That is the whole assignment. Ching! So that's the whole assignment. Um, so next oh, week. So we don't have to ask Sorry? Yeah, You've done, we're done it now. No, I want to see it on paper, please. I want to see it handed in, and it must be neat. Oh, did you notice the last bye -bye. question? Bye bye. Next week, words. next no, week we're doing next number week. two. Okay. See ya. Okay, bye. 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 So next week is the case study. Don't have yeah. yeah. She hasn't got any of those. No, no I gave her these. I, I gave them all Yeah. Oh, you can have this one. Oh. There's a learner guide. Oh. Thank you so much for that. Thank and I you. gave it a shot. All right. So I hope that helped. You did.